This is kind of um, a weird idea I was having. So, I've been um, thinking a lot about, and I've been thinking uh, for a long time about <clears throat> ecological issues, you know, things like deforestation, soil erosion, uh, eutrophication, right, runoff, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, um, you know, things like climate change, all these, all these ecological issues, biodiversity. And then I was kind of, I kind of realized, um, you know, where did, um, <clears throat> where did I get the idea that, you know, that we were harming the environment? So I was kind of thinking about my own thinking. <laughs> Sometimes, um, I know when I watch a lot of the news about, you know, wildfires and uh, de uh, cutting down the Amazon rainforest and, you know, coral reef bleaching, right? All those news, I just feel <clears throat> really sick in my stomach um, about what, you know, people can do. But then I realize, you know, that's kind of, kind of like, um, it's like my own human bias kind of getting in the way. So um, I guess a way to explain it would be, So if there's a person, hypothetically, <laughs> as a thought experiment, now, let's say there's two extremes, right? One extreme is, right, doesn't, uh, one person, right, an extreme, completely doesn't care about the environment, right? You know, will do any sort of mining, any sort of logging, any sort of fishing, right? It, you know, a person who completely doesn't care about the environment, right? Completely, right? And then on the other extreme, right, we have a person who... You know who thinks humans are you know like a uh, like a, a disease right a cancer on the earth right that we should you know that that it was a mistake for us to be on this earth you know so you have these two extremes but then I when I really thought about it they're actually the same thing when I really thought about it and the reason why is because <clears throat> you know the person who's you know um, strip mining and you know, defor uh, logging and fishing, right, with com no concern, right, with no concern on environmental impacts, right, or impacts on other people, right, impacts on other people. Uh, now that person um, has an idea that they're separate from the environment, right? They have an idea that they're separate from the environment. But the person who also views, you know, humanity as like a, a disease on the earth that needs to be eradicated, right? That humanity was a mistake. And that person also thinks, right, hu human, humanity is separate from nature, right? That's why we have to cut it off, right? So in that sense, you know, those two extremes, right? Most people are somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but those two extremes, right, as a thought experiment, they're actually the same idea, it's kind of like the idea um, Alan Alan Watts was talking about with individualism and collectivism, right? They seem to be opposites, but they're actually the same idea, right? They're two sides of the same coin. Individualism is all about the individual. Collectivism, right? It's a collection of individuals, <laughs> right? It's in the name itself. It's a collection. A collection of what? Collection of individuals, right? So individualism and collectivism are both the same idea, right? They're two sides of the same coin, right? The opposite of, um, uh, I, I'll, I'll call it individuality, right? Individuality for now, right? The opposite would actually be totality, right? Seeing the whole system, right? The whole thing as one, right? Seeing the whole thing as one, the total system. No, I'll just make up a word, but I'll call it totalism, <laughs> or holism, holism. <clears throat> so in that same sense, um, I was thinking about you know, the environmental issues because, you know, I, when I really thought about it, um, you know, of course, I don't want air pollution, right? Of course, I don't want water pollution, microplastics, endocrine disruptors, right? Topsoil erosion. But at the same time, of course, right, we need food to eat, right? We need to cut down trees for our houses, for furniture, right? We need to grow food, right? We need all these, right? We need both, right? We need both. Um, and then I kind of came, you know, kind of 
came to realize like um, that they're not separate, right? They're not separate things, right? Being environmental and being economical, right? An environmentalist and an economist aren't different things, right? They're actually the same thing, right? Just looking at two sides of the same coin. Um, you know, the economy is inside the environment. And the funny, you know, kind of <laughs> thought experiment I had was um, if I was an alien and if I was looking at planet Earth, I would see all the plants, right, all the trees surrounding the planet, right, because, you know, plants make up 90% of the biomass or something like that, right? I would see all the greenery. But then, right, I'd see all this plastic, right, all this pollution, right? But if I was an alien, I would probably see that as just another force of nature, right? Just like tree, we see trees, right? It's nature, right? Just, just like how we see trees as nature, I think an alien would see our waste, right? All this plastic and all this garbage, also as nature as well kind of to make it like a little bit easier to <laughs> um, understand with trees you know, we recognize something as a tree right an oak tree a maple tree but there's nothing there's no specific shape that's a tree right trees aren't circular right trees aren't square Trees aren't triangles, right? They're very complex, right? But yet we recognize them as trees, right? So there's a pattern that we can't understand, but, there, but yet there's a pattern, right? a pattern of trees. And even though nature is chaotic, right? A forest, right? A forest isn't completely straight, right? There's no straight rows. Um, there's no straight lines, right? There's, no, there's nothing um, orderly about a forest, right? It's chaos right but within that chaos right there's beauty right there's patterns when i look at a forest no i think it's beautiful right i think it looks absolutely beautiful i can't recognize any pattern from it uh, at least something that I, a pattern that i can understand but yet it looks so beautiful right same with the clouds same with the waves right same with everything in nature and then when I really thought about it, you know, plastics, uh, plastic waste, for example, might be the same thing. When I, right, when I as a human being, you know, look at um, litter, you know, all this trash on the streets, right, you know, <clears throat> my stomach starts hurting, right? It, it just, uh, it feel, it makes me feel nauseous, right? I just, uh, it just doesn't make me feel good, right? When I as a human being... <laughs> look at trash but if i was an alien i might actually see you know, all this plastic waste as like a forest right a plastic forest so to say just like how a tree drops its leaves we humans drop our plastics right it's like a it's a aspect of nature right we're not separate from nature right we're part of it right we are nature right so if i was an alien i'd look at all this right plastic cars right all this air pollution water pollution right uh, if i was an alien i might look at it as beautiful right i might think of it as being beautiful maybe and that's just the thought experiment just to you no know, just to um, get out of my own no, head, right? Get out of my own uh, human perspective, so to say, right? Uh, not, not, not really get out of it, but you know, to look at it from a different point of view. Another thing I really thought about was um, just like how cyanobacteria and uh, algae produced oxygen, right? That was their waste, right? Oxygen was waste for cyanobacteria. But then that waste turned into valuable energy for animals and fungi, right? And, and even plants, right? Plants do a little bit of cellular respiration, right? So what was once waste turned into value, right? Turned into something valuable. 
It's exactly the same with uh, trees, right? Way back then, you know, when trees first started appearing, there was almost, almost nothing that could decompose lignin, right? It was too hard. I think there were still a couple bacteria and fungi uh, who could decompose lignin, uh, but it was so tough that most things couldn't decompose it, right? It was waste, right? The lignin was waste. But what was once waste you know, turned into you know, something valuable, right? You know, which is food and habitat, right? Now mushrooms, right? fungi, and bacteria, some bacteria, right? Decompose lignin. And that becomes their food source, right? That becomes their energy. What was once waste becomes valuable. What was once valuable becomes waste. And I think the same thing might, you know, if I look at it from a, a very long perspective, right, a very wide, very long-term perspective, we see all this plastic waste, right? We see plastic as waste, right? as, as a human being, but maybe, maybe, right, a ten, a hundred, a thousand, a million years from now, there might be something that'll view our plastic as food, right, as energy, right? It's like the big circle of life. And that kind of brings me you know, a, a little bit of hope, right? Life is so, so precious, but it's also, you know, so resilient, right? We've had five mass extinctions on this planet before. You know, we're the survivors, right? We are the descendants of all creatures that survived mass extinctions, right? Over and over and over again. You know, and I'm not sure if we're in a sixth mass extinction, right? Whether nuclear war happens, whether environmental collapse happens, right? Whether meteorites meteors hit the earth, right? Whether super plagues wipe out humanity, right? Whatever happens, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. You know, that's kind of what um, history and science has given me perspective. We are the survivors of diseases, pandemics, Volcanoes, we're the survivors. You know, it's, these are crazy times right now with inflation, you know, with uh, <clears throat> you know, possible world war, con you know, world wars, um, you know, things like energy crisis, food shortages, supply chain collapses. These are crazy times, right? And also, you know, also things like you know, genetic engineering, neuroscience, uh, AI, right? Big data, AI. Now, these are crazy, crazy times. But I think we'll be okay. You know, I really, really do think so. Just like how a forest uh, needs a fire once in a while, right? To clear out all the old growth, right? So new growth can come back in, right? And just like, right, after every mass extinction, right, it was, it was, it was tragic, right? I, of course, I didn't experience it, but, you know, so many species, right, so much life dying, only for life to return once again, right, with new vigor, right, with new explosions of life. After every mass extinction, right, we had an explosion of life. And I think these times are, you know, it's like that turning point, right? It's like the phoenix um, becoming ashes to rise once again. I think we're at that, at that point, at that turning point. You know, the future is unknown. <laughs> I wish I had a... You know, I wish I had a crystal ball, right? Just something I could see everything. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's because I don't know that makes life, life. 
this is all to say, um, you know, I've just been thinking a lot <laughs> during these crazy, crazy times. You know, sometimes uh, it feels overwhelming. It really does. But I, <clears throat> I think it'll all be okay. And when I say okay, I mean truly okay. You know, that doesn't mean we're. You know, that doesn't mean I'm gonna live, right? That doesn't mean you're gonna live. That doesn't mean, right? We're gonna uh, come out alive necessarily, right? Necessarily, we might or might not. I hope. I hope everyone comes out alive, right? Um, but I think it'll be okay. Truly, no, truly, truly okay. Um, there was another funny story by Alan. Uh, he was talking about how um, in a human body, every single day, the immune system is fighting off all these pathogens, right? Every single day, right? Millions, billions of cells are dying, right? Being born and dying every single day. But that keeps our body healthy, right? That keeps our body healthy. And in the same way, maybe, maybe, I don't know if this is true, but maybe, just maybe, all these conflicts, right? All these instabilities, right? what feels like chaos on one level, might actually be order on another level, right? What feels like conflict, right? Immune system fighting off pathogens on one level is is a healthy body on another level, right? So what feels like conflict for humans might might be something healthy, right? For something bigger, right? Something grander, maybe, <laughs> maybe. And you know, just like the Stoics said, you know, uh, or I suppose the Buddhists and the Stoics, you know, this too shall pass, right? Everything shall pass, right? The only constant is change. I want to be here. I want to live life. I want to soak every moment. All this news about conflict and you know, wars and uh, ecological disasters, it, Honestly, it gives me a lot of worry. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to sleep at night because of it. You no, know? and sometimes I just shut it off. You no, know, uh, because it's not good for my mental health. Right, just watching constant news and you know, everything. It's not really good for my health. You know? So sometimes I do shut it off. But um, I think it's also been really, really valuable too, because it's given me uh, perspective. Right, to not take any of this for granted. Right, to not take peace for granted. Right, to not take you know, peaceful lives, to not take, you know, prosperity, right? To not take any of it for granted, right? No, to not take it for granted. No, to appreciate every moment I have, to appreciate every day I have, to appreciate everything I have, right? The people that I live with, right? The food that I get to eat, the things that I love to do, to not take any of it for granted. To not take it for granted. There's one more um, interesting story, <laughs> probably one of my favorite stories, uh, that kind of just you know, it gives me perspective. You know, it's the story about the, uh, <laughs> the old Chinese farmer. Um, and I'll just paraphrase it here, but it's basically about, you know, a farmer finds a horse, right? Or a farmer is keeping a horse, but then the horse runs away. Uh, people ask, wow, that's bad. And then the farmer replies, maybe. And then the horse comes back, and then people are like, that's good. Maybe. Right? And then the son breaks his leg <laughs> riding the horse, and then the people are, wow, that's bad. And then the farmer is, maybe. <laughs> and then... Um, People come to draft the son, but since he broke his leg, you no, know, he, he doesn't get drafted. And then people are like, wow, that's good. Maybe. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite stories. <laughs> we just don't know. We just don't know what's good, what's bad. Maybe. Maybe.
And I think, you know, we have feelings, right? We have feelings that that's bad, right? We have feelings that that's good, right? But being able to recognize them as that, as just that, right? Feelings, right? Feelings are you know, very important, right? Very important, but they're just that, right? They're feelings. They're not reality, right? They feel real, right? Because they're feelings. <laughs> and, um, you know, having that awareness, right? Having that awareness, right? It's very, very key. Uh, you know, but being able to recognize them as, as feelings, right? Instead of truth, right? That's, um, that's so valuable. Having that, you know, psychological freedom, right? Having that space, right? Just having that, right? Good, bad, maybe, right? We just don't know. Some things that were good might be bad, but then some things that were bad might be good. In history, you know, we see, for example, the nuclear bomb, right? That can cause war, bad. But then nuclear energy, right? Nuclear technology can also be used for energy, right? Fission and uh, possibly fusion in the future, right? That's good. Right? But then maybe there's some negative, right? That's bad. Same with, um, you know, the Haber-Bosch pro Bosch process, right? With that, we were able to fixate nitrogen, right? Create tons of uh, ammonia um, to use for fertilizers, right? That's good, right? We make a lot of food. But we, also, we can also create uh, dynamite, right? Bombs with that, nitroglycerin and other explosives, right? That's bad, right? But then, you know... We can feed people, that's good, but then we create runoff, that's bad, right? There's, right, we just don't know. We just don't know what's good, what's bad, maybe. And I think it just comes down to that, you know, this whole rant that I'm, <laughs> I've been going on, it's just really kind of like, a, you know, um, almost like a self-talk therapy for me, right? Just organizing my thoughts, right? Just being able to see thoughts for what they are as just thoughts. You know, they're important, right? They're a part of me, but or they're they're what I do, right? I think. But they're just that, right? They're just thoughts. You know? Kind of like clouds, right? Nothing more, nothing less. Just that. So, <clears throat> this has basically been like, um, you know, with all the things going on, right? Pandemics, inflation, um, conflict, right? All these supply chain, supply chain collapse, energy crisis, right? With everything, everything that's been going on, this is just to remind myself and uh, hopefully... Hopefully you as well, right? Hopefully that you know, things are going to be all right. We don't know what's going to happen, but things will be all right. All right in what way? I don't know. Right? But just to be able to witness it, not just witness it, but to accept it, right? To embrace it, to not take it for granted. To not take my life for granted, to not take peace for granted, right? to not take any of it for granted. To appreciate every moment that I have. And thank you for sharing this uh, moment with me as well. Thank you. <laughs>